Hey everyone, welcome back to more statistics. Uh, today's lesson, 7.1 day two, we're gonna have to, you know, play along with uh, what we have here because this is meant to be something that we would do in class together. So I've put some data together uh, based on some past year's tests and uh, we'll see how this goes. So let's get over there and take a look. So how did chapter six test go? Today we're gonna to take a sample from a population and we're gonna use the average from a sample to estimate the average of the population. So yesterday, we looked at a very small class of students as a population. And in reality, there were many students who took that chapter six test. So we're gonna take a random sample of five students, all of whom took the chapter uh, six test on one of my past years and we're gonna take a look at their scores. So let's see, our first sample of scores, let me just write this down for you. The first sample of scores that I'm seeing are 88, no, sorry, let me go backwards, uh, 58, uh, 99, 90, 98, uh, 40, uh, 49, and what is that, 85. So let's compute the mean of those five scores. We get 78, which is uh, really close to 70, it was really 77.8, but we're gonna round this to the nearest whole number. We're gonna do this a few times and write down the scores and write down the mean. Actually, we're just gonna write down the means for four of them. So here are those four um, samples of five and their means. And then the next thing to do is, well, everybody in the class, and I think this class had 25 people in it, Every person did four stickers. So eventually we got 100 stickers on a dot plot in the front of the room. Every sticker or every dot represented a different sample of five students. So let's get that dot plot copied here. All right, so that's a pretty big dot plot. Um, this is a distribution of sample means n equals five. So again, each one of these dots represents the average from a sample of five students. Okay, so um, each dot is a, a repeat, an average from a sample of five. There are 100 dots, so that represents 100 different samples. Uh, this is not a sampling distribution because this isn't every possible sample of five, st of five test scores. It's just 100 of those samples. Okay, um, what do we think the true chapter six test average was? And looking at this dot plot, I see a mound shaped distribution. So it seems to me that the average test score should be somewhere at the peak of this mound. And if I'm not mistaken, that's 73. Okay. So a sampling distribution, or we have to say that the, you know, based on the evidence that we see here, based on all of the samples that we've taken, we think the true chapter six average is 73, because that's where the peak is. Or maybe better put, it's where the center of the distribution is. Number four says a sampling distribution shows the means collected from all possible samples of size five uh, from the population. So is this a sampling distribution? And we already said no. So the dot plot does not represent all samples. It's just 100 samples. And uh, believe me, there's more than 100 samples of size five that could have been taken from the population. 
Next, we took a random sample of five midterm scores from Rockford High School and got a mean of 68. So is there convincing evidence that Rockford students did worse than our students? Okay, let's take a look at this. Where is, and I forgot the number, 68? Where is 68 on this dot plot? And 68 looks like it's going to be right here. How many of our students did worse, 68 or worse? That's one, two, or one. How many of our samples are 68 or less? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. We have twenty-three out of a hundred samples are less than or equal to 68. Okay. That's not rare. If Rockford's average was 73, there is a, like like Taft, if Rockford aver average was the same as Taft, 73, then there would be a 23% probability of choosing a sample n equals 5 with an x bar of 68. Since that's not rare, we can't say that Rockford's test average is less than 73. And that's kind of the way you have to think with statistics. We have to start by assuming a number for Rockford. So we're going to assume that Rockford has the same average as Taft. And then we're going to take a sample and see how probable would that sample be if the average was actually 73 in this case. And if it's a high probability, greater than 5%, then we don't have reason to doubt that that 73 number, the number we started with, is false. However, if we got a number and it was less than 5% probable, then we would say then, you know, it's probably, it's most likely that the assumption we started with, the average of 73, is not true. Okay, so greater than 5%, that means we don't doubt our assumption. Less than 5% means we doubt the assumption that we started with. But we'll get into more of that later. So, um, what we really wanted to look at was the difference between a um, unbiased estimator and a biased estimator. So in an unbiased estimator, like the mean, the center of the sampling distribution is the same as the true value of the parameter. So in our not quite complete sampling distribution, we were centered at 73. So we're saying that since the mean is an unbiased estimator, the population average was also 73. If you have a biased estimator, that means even though this, the peak, the center of the distribution is over here, the true value of the mean is over here. So the sampling distribution doesn't match the true value of the parameter. And then uh, finally, Increasing the sample size will always decrease the variability in the statistic and really the statistics sampling distribution. So the sampling distribution gets more narrow as the sample size increases. Okay, so slowly, 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 we're building up our understanding of sampling distributions. So let's take a look at this next check your understanding bit. The histogram on the left shows the interval between eruptions of Old Faithful recorded for 122 eruptions during a particular month. Wow, that's a lot. For this population, the median was 75, and we used technology to take 500 SRSs of size 10 from this population. The mean of these 500 was 73.5. Is the sample median an unbiased estimator of the population median? 
The answer is no. The population median is 75. However, the mean of our sample medians was 73.5. So they're not the same. Therefore, the sample median is not an unbiased estimator. Next, suppose we had taken 20 sam samples of size 20 instead of size 10. Would the variability of the sampling sample hold on? Would the variability of the sampling distribution of sample median be larger, smaller, or about the same? And it would be smaller. Larger sample sizes always have sampling distributions with less variability. And finally, describe the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample median. Well, the shape definitely looks single peaked, but right skewed. I mean, left skewed. So the shape is single peak and left skewed. Okay, well, that's it for our look at the basics of sampling distributions. Um, hopefully, well, not even hopefully, most, most of the time this is not that big a deal for most students. It's a pretty easy concept to wrap your head around, uh, but you really, really, really have to make the distinction between a sampling distribution and a population distribution. Also, remember, bigger the sample, the smaller the variability in the sampling distribution. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.